through your sayings, through your utterances, you also uh, manifest and express riya. For instance, you find religious people manifest this type of riya by memorizing history and events of the past for the sake of arguing. So the people they know, oh, those people are knowledgeable. So that when they are in any discussion, they pretend to know everything so that they will defeat their opponents. So they don't learn these things to please Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and to increase their knowledge so that they get closer to Allah. No, they learn this and they acquire the knowledge only for the sake of argument. That's why my dear brothers and sisters, Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa he warned us against arguing. He said, don't argue. Don't argue at all. And if you leave the argument, though you have the right, though you have the truth, but you leave the argument for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will substitute you. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will give you as a reward in the Jannah, a palace in the Jannah. So don't ever use this type of riya, which is by saying and pretending that you are a religious person and you are a knowledgeable person, etc. Also, there is another type of riya. Riya can be shown in the actions. Religious people show it by prolonging their prayers, or ruku, or sujood. So people, they see, mashallah, see how he prays? That is because when the people are seeing him, watching him, but if he is alone, the way he prays, he can hardly straighten his back. The moment he gets up from ruku' immediately to sujood, just like a spring, going up, coming down, going up, coming down. But if he is in front of the people, people are watching him, he prolongs the ruku', he prolongs the sujood, so that the people are impressed, and the people admire, and the people praise him. So this is riya, indeed. Another form of riya, wal riyadu billah, is boasting of having many friends and visitors. This is actually a sickness for the religious people. Religious people, they do this by inviting scholars to their houses, so you can say, oh, we have many scholars visited us, we are a family of scholars, we are this and that. He's not inviting those scholars so that they can study together and benefit from each other, no. So the people around, they say, oh, see the scholars, they visit him. See the ulama, they come to their houses. So that is also another form of shirk. Having said this, my dear brothers and sisters, the, we also want to know now the root causes of riya. Why people, what is the root cause? Why people, they uh, show off and uh, do things not purely for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. There are many factors here. For instance, the first one is love for praise. People, they, they have this sickness, disease in the heart. So they love to be praised. They love the people to talk about them. This is one reason. Another reason is fear of criticism. They don't want to be criticized. So they have to pretend and they have to show off because they fear the constructive criticism. The constructive criticism is essential and needed. Sayyidina Umar ibn Khattab عنه, used to say, Rahim Allah umra'an ahda ilayna ayubana. May Allah reward and may Allah shower His mercy upon the person who shows us our faults and mistakes. Subhanallah. Umar is saying, a person who gives me and who shows and pinpoint and shows me my defects, may Allah show His mercy on him. He's indeed, He's giving me presents, gifts. So we should love criticism because criticism is means of improving. But if you hate criticism and you don't accept it, the constructive criticism, then you will not improve. And who is among us is perfect? We're not perfect. We are full of faults and mistakes and shortcomings, etc. Shortcomings. So we need to keep improving. But the person who has this sickness in his heart, he hates criticism. Another reason is fear of criticism. They don't want to be criticized. 
So they have to pretend and they have to show off because they fear the constructive criticism. The constructive criticism is essential and needed. Sayyidina Umar ibn Khattab radiallahu anhu used to say, Rahim Allahum ra'an ahda ilayna ayubana. May Allah reward and may Allah shower his mercy upon the person who shows us our faults and mistakes. Subhanallah. Umar is saying a person who gives me and who shows and pinpoint and shows me my defects, may Allah show his mercy on him. He's indeed, he's giving me presents, gifts. So we should love criticism because criticism is means of improving. But if you hate criticism and you don't accept it, the constructive criticism, then you will not improve. And who is among us is perfect? We're not perfect. We are full of faults and mistakes and shortcomings, etc. Shortcomings. So we need to keep improving. But the person who has this sickness in his heart, he hates criticism. Imam Shafi'i, rahimahullah, he said, Ta'ahadni bi nushika bin firadi wa jannibni nasihata fil jama'a. فَإِنَّ النُّصْحَ بَيْنَ النَّاسِ نَوْعٌ مِنَ التَّوْبِيخِ لَا أَرْضَ اسْتِمَعَ The meaning, he said, Imam Shafi'i, Please, my dear brother and dear friend, criticize me and show me my mistakes and show me my faults. But when we are alone, you and I, and this is, we have to learn from this Imam, this manner, this adab, how to criticize each other. You grab me by my hand and tell me, brother, you have this, this, and this, you should not have. Sister, you have this and this, you should not have. But this is when you are alone, not in a gathering. Because Imam Shafi'i said, وَجَنِّبْنِ النَّصِيحَةَ فِي الْجَمَاعَةِ Never advise me in gatherings. Never advise me in front of the people. وَجَنِّبْنِ النَّصِيحَةَ فِي الْجَمَاعَةِ Why? You should not advise me in, in front of my friends. فَإِنَّ النُّصْحَ بَيْنَ النَّاسِ نَوْعٌ مِنَ التَّوْبِيخِ لَا أَرْضَ السِّمَاعَةِ Because advising me in gatherings is a form of rebuking and reprimanding which I hated. I am not ready to listen to you. So people should, as Muslims, we should develop this attitude of accepting criticism from whomever. As long as that criticism is constructive, beneficial, why not? Why not? So this is the second factor. A person, he falls into the riya because he fears, he or she fears criticism. Also the third factor is the covetousness for what the people have in their hands. He craved to and long to have what the people have in their hands. So that is also another reason for having the riya ul riyadu billah. And we know in the hadith, when the Prophet ﷺ was asked, a person might fight for the sake of people saying that he is a brave man or for the sake of that he is defending his tribe, etc. So they are, or nationalism, or that he is defending his country. Which one of this is fi sabilillah for the cause of Allah? He said, he who fights in order that the word of Allah remains the supreme is considered as fighting in the cause of Allah. So even, that's why I remember we mentioned that the first batch will be martyrs because the motive was not for the cause of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Also, Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, when one of his companions, Abu Dar, he said, Oh, Prophet of Allah, please make me a governor. He said, No, 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 Abu Dar. You are a weak person. You are a weak person. So I will not appoint you as a governor because to be a governor, to be in a post in a government is actually a responsibility. And people will regret, believe me, all those who are in, in positions, whether they are rulers, kings, presidents, prime ministers, ministers, they will regret if they didn't do this fearing Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Because on the day of resurrection, 